The Big H Podcast, tune in now. Conversations that a while. Laugh and learn, stay a while. Let's explore that Hilton style. From the highs to the lows, every story just explodes. Mike's got questions on the go, diving deep from head to toe. Every week the guests align, sharing moments so divine. Stay with us, the pace is fine. Every episode you'll find. The Big H Podcast, tune in now. Conversations that all wow. Laugh and learn, stay a while. Let's explore that Hilton style. Hello and welcome to the Foster Focus with Hilton Parma Historical Society, Mr. President, Mr. John Foster. Today he's going to take over the reins and interview Mr. Rich Edelman. John? Thanks, Mike. Uh, I guess today I'm privileged to uh, be talking to a friend of mine for almost 70 years. Richard Irwin Edelman, right, Rich? Yeah. Is uh, really the first guy that I ever met (laughs) in Hilton. First friend, and uh, we've been uh, friends uh, ever since. Uh, So it's it's a lot of fun. We grew up together, so this is going to kind of be a reminiscence between the two of us that are going to try and describe a childhood growing up in Hilton in the uh, 50s and 60s. We were both born in 1950. Um, so, Rich, let's start. You're Richard Irwin Edelman. I already told you that, and it was always kind of a secret that your middle name was Irwin. Is that your name for uh, a relative there, by the way? Oh, uh, yes, my uh, grandfather. Grandfather, okay. So let's just get your family straight. Your mom and dad were who? Uh, George and June Edelman. George and June, and you had siblings, right? Yes. And they were? George and uh, Margaret. Yeah, we always called George Georgie you know, when we were kids, because yep. that's how it was distinguished from your dad. And uh, the uh, and you grew up at the uh, at the Arlington Hotel, right? Yep, the old Arlington Hotel. Yeah, tell us where that was, because it's no longer standing. That was on 57 Hovey Street. Okay. And that's down at the uh, intersection of the railroad tracks and the Hovey Street as it then right. existed. In the area where the family restaurant is. Right. I think that the, uh, ultimately the uh, uh, Baptist Church purchased the, the Arlington and turned it into the, their parking lot. So the parking mm-hmm. lot behind the right. Baptist Church is where. Uh, we got uh uh, there's a, a rumor going around it burnt down during the Hilton fire. It never burnt down uh, during the Hilton fire. Yeah. It was torn down. Yeah. It was in the process of being sold. Uh, Do you know, had it been sold at the time of the fire? Or it was it been... in the process. Okay. Uh, Interesting. So, and, and I know your uncle. Uh, was a lawyer, so he was probably handling that transaction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, let's talk about the Arlington Hotel because it was quite a structure. Yes. Uh, it was uh, one of the biggest buildings in town, I would say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one, counting the basement, one, two, three, four stories above the basement. How many ways were there? Was there was yeah, a basement. There was a basement, first floor, uh, second floor. What we call uh, the attic. Third, no, no, the, the first floor, or I'm sorry, basement, then the first floor where the bar was, uh, second floor where the boarders would have stayed, or the carpet baggers, and then there was uh, uh, another floor where the carpet baggers would have stayed, that we, which we turned into an attic, and then uh, there was uh, another floor which was the attic. I don't think I was ever up in the what you just described as the attic, the attic, fifth floor. Attic, right. If you what was up there? Anything? Uh, How did you get there? A ladder? Oh uh, yeah, yep. And a high ladder it must have been because yes. I think that fourth floor used to be when the Arlington was originally built a ballroom. Yes. 
because it was a grand staircase that led up through to that yep. to that attic or grand ballroom on the fourth floor. Yep. Okay. Um, and then what was on the third floor? I mean, yeah, well, the, the basement, first floor, second floor was all. No, uh, that was borders for borders. Uh, borders was there. Yeah, the carpet baggers. Why do you call them carpet baggers? Because uh, the <laughs> depot was right across the street. <laughs> or, the, or across the tracks, I should say. So they would, you know, so P, I guess that was the reason the hotel was built, was to yeah. accommodate businessmen and what have you coming into town on the yeah. train. Mm -hmm. Yes, because uh, I, there was a long porch that covered two sides, I think, of the hotel. Yeah. Came all along or most of the way along the railroad tracks and very close. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, how close was it from the railing to the tracks? Was We're talking maybe 50 feet. Yeah, and uh, then there was, and it came across the front. Now, uh, tell me the borders. You had a, a, the, you had regular borders. You had people that were living there for years. Am I yep. right? Mm -hmm. And who were they? Do you remember their names? Oh, the Huff brothers, uh, Armour Downs. Armand Downs was there. I believe it was Armour Downs. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, and then you and your family had the rooms in the, the back, back part yeah. of the mm -hmm. yeah yes i remember and there was a, a back stairs as well that came up into your quarters yep uh from the kitchen yep that's uh, right now tell me about the operations there i mean this was it was more than it was a, it was a, a place for a, for boarders for rumors yeah you know, rooms for people to stay yep and then there was a bar All right uh what about a restaurant dining yep and uh, that was, uh, as I recall it, in sort of that sunroom along the tracks, it seemed to me like. Yep, that's right. Uh, and then uh, uh, and there was also liquor sales there. Am I correct or no? Yes, it was. Uh, package sales. Package goods, yeah. Package goods, that was the name they had for them. Yeah. Uh, and you, you were, as a child, I remember, and I'm talking about a six-year-old or a seven-year-old, you had chores. Yes. Tell me, what were your chores? Uh, empty the beer chute and that, uh, wash dishes and, you know, do different chores. Uh, the, every Each one of us kids had a chore to do and that, and uh, we all worked together as a family. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was a, it was a coordinated effort. The chute, the basement, that's where, yeah. that's where you and I grew up. Yeah, <laughs> you could access the basement from the outside and from the inside. Yeah. Um, the uh, tell them what the beer shoot was because that was the job, and and that job had to be done, and you couldn't come out and play until it was, it was done. done. So we all, you and and me and our other friends would team up on yeah. getting this job out of the way so we yes. could start. It was like a Tom Sawyer story. It was. It was. <laughs> yeah. Tell them about it. But it was, uh, it was, it was a box with uh, slides, uh, shelves on it. Floor and, to ceiling. It was this like, yeah, floor, floor to ceiling was probably four. three, four feet yep. square. Just a box and that. And uh, my father would uh, shoot down an empty bottle and uh, it would slide down. and uh, It would come down a tube from, tube, the, from yeah. the bar above into this big box and then there were yep. these ramps, these metal ramps, and they would just roll, 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 roll. Hope they wouldn't to, break. <laughs> yeah, I hope they wouldn't break. And that, and, uh, and gradually then, it would fill up. Fill up and then it had to be emptied. And if not, they'd break and sometimes they'd break anyways. And that, and they have to empty it every day and maybe twice a and day. And they put them into empty beer cases. And beer cases and then the, the beer companies would come and pick them up and Give us money for the empty bottles. You know? <laughs> it was it was container returned before uh, <laughs> before it was required. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I must say about this job because uh, you and I did it a lot. Yeah. Uh, that uh, I uh, the, the part about it that was hard because you would sit there on cases and take in, and you got and you had to sort them as well. Different yep. size um, bottles went in different size cases, but yep. they were always a bit sticky. They were always a bit, uh, you know, uh, and smelly. Yeah. And so, you know, you need to clean up afterward. And uh, it always sort of, uh, I thank you for it because it always left me with a, a 
resistance to, to beer and alcohol generally that I managed to avoid <laughs> thanks to the, <laughs> thanks to my childhood. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but anyway, it was, uh, uh, and, and one more thing about that debasement, it was also kind of a clubhouse, wasn't yep. it? Tell us how. Well, it had uh, very interesting places to hide and do things like that. It was, uh, they had their old coolers down there. And uh, there were cases as well, cases of beer, floor to ceiling, yep. all around. And we would rearrange the cases to suit ourselves to make furniture, essentially. <laughs> if you were inclined to lie down, you'd take out you know, four or five and you could stretch or you could <laughs> sit in chairs. And so all around, we were all kind of gathered, four or five of us, while the where it was turn it was to, you know, throw bottles into the right slots uh, was the work and then chatting away. And this was, we were little boys. I tell people that we grew up in a, uh, you know, in a bar and we kind of did, but we in the basement. And yeah. it was, it was really not anything like you would think. It was just a really fun indoor spot mm -hmm. for boys to play with, to basically sit around and yep. play with their friends before we could go outside. And a little bit cooler in the summer. Summer time, warmer in the winter time. Oh yeah, yep. yeah. It was, uh, the, yeah. Uh, it was cool. Yeah, there was uh, <laughs> the I only I remember, and maybe we can remember this together. The uh, Susquecentennial. Oh yeah. Nineteen fifty nine, Hilton celebrated its hundred and fiftieth uh, anniversary. And uh, of its uh, incorporation and uh, the top of the town of Parma, it was. And uh, it was also held, the celebration was held simultaneous with the carnival and the New York State Volunteer Firemen's Convention, <laughs> all in Hilton at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, there was a lot of alcohol being consumed at the Arlington. Yes. Tell me, uh, <laughs> uh, tell me what you remember about the Susquehannock. It just went on twenty four seven. Yeah, <laughs> fire fire sirens going all night long, or partying all night long, and all day long. You couldn't keep the shoot empty. I mean, you just had to be at it all the time. Yep. Uh, the <laughs> I can recall uh, firemen having water fights on Main Street, <laughs> you know, going by on their fire trucks and the other, the opposite, you know, their rivals or whoever it would be, and they would squirt them <laughs> with the hoses. Uh, it was a, quite a, a, a bacchanal. I don't know what to call it. It was, <laughs> it was wild and that was a lawlessness. Fire sirens going all the time and uh, just a uh, thing you had to you had to grow a mustache or sideburns. Oh, yes. You got fined or put in the stockade. That's right. That's right. They put my dad in the stockade. Yeah. Because he couldn't grow whiskers. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and if you got it, you had to buy a button. If you couldn't, if you didn't have a, couldn't do it, you had to have to buy a button. I think he got put in anyway because he was a JP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, uh, uh, one of the things that the uh, the Arlington did, I guess, to promote business was uh, to um, they had sponsored baseball teams, mm -hmm. softball particularly is what I remember. Tell me about the softball at the uh, Arlington. Oh, it was very competitive. Ah, yep, yep. We had uh, my father had a team there, and uh, and uh, he gee, they played two or. Two two nights a week, I think, or maybe more. Mm -hmm. uh, had a real good team, uh, and uh, he really enjoyed. He was a very very fierce competitor, and uh, and that and that was the bad boy. And uh, I think you were the scorekeeper. I was the scorekeeper, yeah. And that and uh, and your dad was the first baseman. Yeah. It was when I was remembering. Yeah. yeah, and we even played fast pitch too at at times. Uh, and that, but mainly the softball. And your dad played until a ripe old age. Yes, yes, 70, uh, 72, I think it was. 70, so right up until the time he passed. Almost. Yep. Oh, he was going to play then that, that year, the coming up. Uh huh. And uh -huh. Had, so. Yeah, and uh, the team was so good that it was almost, uh, it became too good to play in the local league. It's, by the local league, I mean the Hilton yeah. uh, school district guys. 
And so you started to seek out competition more broadly and competed in tournaments. We'd play tournaments and uh -huh. things like that. Yep. Yeah. I remember Bayside was one place where tournaments were conducted. Yep. Uh, there was, uh, um, and it had fences. Yep. Uh, we're going to interview uh, Charlie Mance, Chuck Mance. Yep. And I remember Chuck played. Yep. Uh, for uh, uh, name some others, and we'll uh, talk about uh, Chuck Mance, Maurice Weigel, Walt Vanderbush, uh, the Fleischauer brothers, the Fleischauer brothers, Johnny uh, and uh, Bobby, Bobby, yeah. and that um, uh, Willahan. Uh, Bernie Wheelahan. Bernie Wheelahan, um, Icus was, uh, and Which then, Icus is? Uh, oh, gee. Jude, maybe? Younger one. Probably. Oh, God, no. Oh, I can't think of it right now. I, Sorry, I don't, don't bother. Yeah. There's so many. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I got it. Probably. I can remember the two of them I want to talk about. Chuck Mance, first of all. Yeah. Uh, I rem Chuck Mance was so powerful a hitter that it was even playing in these more competitive leagues. He he could just hit a, hit a home run every time. You know, he would come up five or six times and hit four or five home runs. It was kind of almost. Uh, there were a couple of guys like that that were just such sluggers that slow pitch kind of got distorted, it seemed, as a game mm -hmm. by you guys because you were so good. Mm -hmm. I mean, did you feel that way or did you notice what I'm talking about? Or well, you, you, you're you, just happy you, winning. You could almost tell, uh, you know, when a, guy, when a guy gets up to bat that he's going to hit a home run. Uh, that they're that, that, that good. And yeah. That, um, um, now, you played for the team yourself for a while, right? Well, yeah, when I got uh, old enough. Yeah. Uh, back in those days, uh, I was just a bat boy. Yeah, yeah. And that, so. But when you got older, what did you play? What position? Oh, I played outfield. I caught. Uh -huh. And that, so. I got to play along with my dad. That was amazing. You mentioned Bernie Wheelahan. Bernie Wheelahan. And yeah. Bernie was uh, quite an extraordinary guy that met a tragic end. Can you want to tell a story of Bernie? Yes, he uh, he hit me, I, along, along with his son, his he was a bat boy with me. Uh, on Mike Wheelahan. Mike Wheelahan, and uh, his his dad uh, was good, very good friends with my my dad. And it was on a Sunday. We were playing. Uh, uh, we had three games to play that day, and uh, Bernie could only play the the first two. And uh, what position did Bernie play? He played shortstop. Yeah, he was an outstanding athlete. In yes, he respect. was. Yeah. Yes, he was. Uh -huh. And uh, he only could play the first two games. And uh, so he had to leave. And um, when we got back uh, after the games were all done that day, uh, we found out that uh, he was also a volunteer fireman. And um, when he got back uh, after leaving the game, there was a, a fire. And um, he uh, he always drove his cars to the fire, and that day he decided to take the fire truck, and he was riding down the back of the fire truck, and um, um, he was on the back, and the fire truck hit hit a bump, and he fell off, and was tragically killed on that day. Yeah. And if he had stayed to the last game it might not have happened right and it was a great loss for us and for for, for, for the fire department and the community and then, it was it was it shocked the community i yes, remember i yes. was a young fellow but uh he had gone the bernie wheelahan had been a classmate of my father when we were when they were children it uh Gooseneck Alley uh, School in North Greece. Mm -hmm. But yes, it, it, it moved the whole town was uh, yeah. uh, shaken. They can all, everybody can kind of remember it that was around then. The, uh, yeah, and, uh, um, and we, uh, we, get, we made a trophy for the Bernie Whalehan Memorial Trophy that went on for a long number of years 
for him uh, to remember him by. What, it's the winner of the tournament or something? Uh, for the, our, our league in Hilton uh, went to the winner of that. I wonder where that where that trophy is now. Uh, I believe it's, uh, in, Mike? I believe it's, oh, well, Mike's got one. Huh? And uh, it's in the, also in the, one of the fences in the fire hall, ah. if I'm not mistaken. Ah, okay. All right. Good to know. Thanks. Uh, the, uh, I was talking to you earlier about uh, just village life. We'll take it outside of the Arlington Hotel um, to just how it was growing up, how it was different than today in 1950s, uh, where, what we did. Let, let's just sort of talk about uh, the playground, if you will. Because mm-hmm. I like to say that the playground for us, there weren't really playgrounds in the sense that we think of them today. I think there was one or two little ones about that had a merry-go-round and a jungle gym. They were all at the schools. At the schools, exactly. Uh, but for us, it was really the railroad. Yep. And the creek, to a lesser extent. But the railroad was... Uh, uh, so it ran right behind my house and right beside your house. And, uh, uh, t- tell us, tell us what you did, at the, what we did at the, at the railroad, what, in our playground of the, of the fifties. Well, we played along the tracks and that, uh, we played on, uh, we played on the railroad cars and that, um, uh, we also played down in the trestle. Yes, the trestle was a wonderful spot. It was sort of the intersection. It was the intersection of the tracks, the railroad, and the creek. And so. Yeah, down by the Heinz plant. Uh, Canning factory. All yeah. of those, like on the railroad, you know, I, games that I remember were, let's see how far you can walk on it, like a balance beam. And we were quite, it was literally, we could go hundreds of yards. <laughs> we were Olympians on that one, putting coins on there and letting the... Uh, train run over the coin and flatten it down mm-hmm. to something uh the uh uh the the railroad cars themselves you talk about playing in them it was it was almost more up and over them because they all had a ladder up a, a, a gang a walkway a yeah. metal walkway and then a ladder down so it could be a, a place to uh play tag shall we say yeah. Uh, with all sorts of rules of kids, you just would make them up. You can't, you got to stay on the rails or on the boxcars, no getting, you know, whatever it was <laughs> uh, to, uh, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it was a sort of a free form, make it up play mm-hmm. that seems to me is really distinct from how it's done now, where it's really structured and kids today get lessons on how to, they get gymnastics lessons and figure out how to walk the balance beam. They get swimming lessons instead of going to the swimming hole and they really learn how to swim. You know, I, I know there's, it's a price of free time, but they're more accomplished, it seems mm. to me. I don't know if, what you think about that. If yeah. it's, uh, you've got children and grandchildren. By the way, tell me about your children your, and your wife, please. Tell me about, that's another story. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I met my wife at uh, Varsity Inn. Yeah. Yeah, fell in love with her right away. And, what uh, was her name? Carol. Carol Ann uh, Warner. Uh-huh. And that, um, we were married for 42 years, and um, she got uh, sick there. She got dementia. Early onset. Yeah. It was yeah, a... early onset, and uh, she was sick for quite a while, and... Uh, she passed away from it, and uh, that, that we got two wonderful children. Yeah, got um, three uh, wonderful grandchildren. Tell us about your children first. Well, uh, well Chrissy is our oldest. Um, she's a doctor of pharmacy, and I've got a son, and he's a mailman. Uh huh. And then he just got married here uh, last year in September. Yes, he did. And my daughter, she's been married to I can't tell you how many years she's been married, but she's got three children. <laughs> and that, um, and uh, her husband's yeah. a pharmacist, also. Isn't yes, he? he's a pharmacist. <laughs> yep. He works with I know U of R or yep. URMC or somebody like that. Yep. Is there in the, the yep. administration? Proud, yeah, yeah. Proud, proud of very both of them. Yeah, you got to be. Your kids yep. are just great. And, yep. you, know, you just got such a 
a super family. It's uh, <laughs> you're justly proud, my friend. Yeah. The uh, um, I guess uh, I want to talk about uh, uh, one of the the big uh, projects of our childhood, which was our treehouse. Mm. Because <laughs> we built a phenomenal treehouse in a woods that was located in the middle of the center of the village. Um, there uh, was a, a woodland <laughs> that existed on the east side of Hovey Street from the railroad tracks up to the backs of the, of the buildings on Main Street. And uh, where houses had once uh, existed on Hovey Street on the east side of it, but it burned down or been destroyed or whatever, and allowed to fall into disrepair and decay and ultimately disappear and be overgrown. Mm -hmm. And there, we had a carriage house behind our house. There's all these houses in the building, the old houses did. And my father decided to take it down and build a, an attached garage. And I asked him if we could have the wood or some of the wood from the barn that was being taken down. He said yes. So that was 1961, the summer of 61. I looked up the building for a minute and uh, Richie and myself and yeah. uh, and Chuck Ritter. Chuck Ritter, Paul Blodgett. Well, they weren't there yet. It was just the three of us to start. You, me, and Rats. Chuck Ritter, we called them Rats, R-A-T-Z. And uh, the three of us started hauling that wood away from as the, <laughs> the as the uh, Construction people would take it down. My uncle was doing it, actually. We would haul it off as much as we could, and we built up a stockpile and then proceeded to build this very elaborate treehouse uh, that really, and we just did it ourselves as boys. We Every every week, we'd pool our allowances and come <laughs> up with, like, a dollar between the three of us. And buy nails. And buy nails. Yep. And and we and get out there pine. We, it looked like sort of a, a really bad homeless encampment, you know, something that was really, <laughs> you know, you wouldn't want around yet. But it was. <laughs> <laughs> but we were just allowed, and we had bridges. There were long bridges in this tree fort that we were. It was about twelve or fourteen feet in the air, and the bridges were like good at twenty. I know between the two, with that bridge 20 feet long in two sections um, and a foot wide, and we could get between two tree houses. And one tree house, we took these long boards and made it into a dungeon with a trap door. And it went on and on and on as we just kept expanding it mm. and playing there. And we spend mm. almost every day in the warm weather yep. building, playing, or racing around and playing tag, sort of an aerial form of tree tag. Um, for years, <laughs> uh, the village was different in that time, wasn't it, Richie? And how the, the the outside came right in, the orchards came right into the center of town, yep. on the north and east sides. So they were migrant camps inside of the village in the barns. Um, it was a really quite. It was in transition from its agricultural to its. Yeah, I think the like the Calmers was the closest one out there by Burgers. Mm, we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're the high yeah school Warren Palmer. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's right. All of that was all the current high school, and well, in, yeah. in the village was all orchard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, uh, 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 yeah, it was. I guess the best way to put it is a time in trans transition. Let's talk about a couple other big events that happened over the years. We talked a little bit about uh, the fire, but let's pick up on that a minute. The day of the 1965 fire on that burned down Main Street. Uh, tell them it was a Sunday morning. Yep. When did you first become aware that there was something happening? Well, we were my sister and I were going uh, to go church, and we're going out the back door of the hotel. And uh, you were going over to St. Leo's. Is that where you went to church yep, at that time? St. Leo's, and we were uh, going out the back door. And as we were going out the back door, my uh, brother was coming up to step back back steps of the stairs and he says the town is on fire and uh, he says I'm going back up to see if I can help and uh, my sister and I were going to go to church that day and you decided right then <laughs> right then and there and you could hear, start hearing the sirens going on and, and, uh, and it just all 
broke loose that day. It was just uh, unbelievable. It, it was just uh, crazy. So what did your brother do? Let's start with him. He was going back up uh, to see what he could do. And uh, he started trying to get people out of the apartments up above over the town uh, on Hovey Street side. Yeah. And, and he went up the steps to uh, get people out of the the apartments up over the town. Yes. And then, I heard him tell about how he, as he went up those back stairs to reach the, the common hallway, uh, his eyes were at the level of the the hallway floor, you could see that that was clear of smoke, but as you went up to the ceiling, it was full of smoke, and he yelled at the people to get down on the floor and crawl to him, and he sort of got their fingers and led them down the stairs. But one lady didn't. What? Tell me what that, what happened there? Uh, he, he was, as he was up there, he said, he, he could see her, I guess, at the top of the stairs, and, uh, he says to come on and get going, and uh, she says, I got to go back and get my birds and that. And uh, it was the last time he saw her, and that was a lady that perished in the fire. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, and you, you guys were, you, by you, I mean you, your sisters, your mom and dad, Georgie's over trying to rescue people. What now? What did you guys start to do? We, we were, we were, the wind was blowing our way towards down Hovey Street. And we were starting to evacuate our the hotel and get our clothes and our belongings and put them in our car to get them out of there. And people were moving their stuff to our place to get their stuff out of their houses because people when, were even closer to the fire than the hotel. Yeah, and they were moving their stuff to our place on our front porch, and. Um, and then all of a sudden the wind changed, and that's when it took it over towards the IGA mm -hmm. and that, and uh, further on down. Okay. Yeah, oh. it's uh, now you became sort of a, uh, I want to say, a, a center for the firemen to, because uh, it was March and they were getting wet and it was freezing cold, and yeah. so they were taking refuge periodically at the hotel. Yeah, and. Uh, they were coming in to get warm and that, and there must have been about an inch of water on our uh, floor and the bar and all that. And my father was uh, giving his socks to the firemen to to give him some dry socks. The socks out of his dresser. Uh, yeah, out of, out of his dresser. <laughs> and and uh, that wasn't lasting very long, and he was giving them shots to get them warmed up mm -hmm. and that. And... Uh, and my brother, he, he finally had come back and he was mopping the floor up, trying to get that all uh, cleaned up and that. And uh, and it was just, you know, just plain chaos going on. And it was just more fire trucks coming in. I forgot how many fire truck companies came in. Mm -hmm. It was, I, I believe, over 20 mm -hmm. that came in to help fight the fire. Now, what amazed me about that I mentioned to you earlier was how it wasn't cordoned off. It was, there was a big event going on on Main Street, something like, you know, the Christmas festival or something, and everybody was out. Everybody, you know, and myself uh, and others and boys, we were just on Main Street amongst the firemen uh, watching. Mm -hmm. It was a spectacular. And Richie, you, you got involved with... Uh, Aiding the firemen, tell them about that. Well, we went down to, uh, we, we got down to the, the fire department and uh, they were getting soup and that to the fire department. We got a, a grocery cart. The fire department at that time was down where the fireman's field is right, now. Where the fireman's field, it was right up to the to where the road is. Mm -hmm. And they were getting soup, and we got a grocery cart and uh, a big pot of soup and uh, cups. And we got some cigarettes from the Super Duper. And we went down, up on Main Street, and we were given hot soup. And if they needed us a pack of cigarettes, we gave them a pack of cigarettes. And we went down, up and down Main Street, and then back down, got soup and cigarettes and pack up mm -hmm. and down Main Street for them. I, I love that image of these firemen caked in ice, fighting this inferno, sipping on their soup and 
you know, but make it you want to have a pack right, of right, cigarettes right. <laughs> to burn as well. Uh, anyway, yeah, that was 1965, I guess. The, <laughs> uh, so anyway, in any event, the, the Arlington didn't burn. They stopped no. the fire ultimately. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and after tremendous damage. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the guys, I guess, unloaded the cars and went back to uh, uh, operating the hotel until such time as it was sold. Yeah. Right. And then at that point, you moved up to... Uh, right. We were in the process at the time of uh, buying Main, part of Main Street. And the church, Baptist Church, was in the process of buying uh, the Arlington to make into a school for the, for their kids, for the kids' name. Yeah, uh, that that purchase. I wonder if, if we may. I tell the story about your dad's dispute with the village over the land behind the. Uh, uh, you know, you know that the story? big M. Why the big M? No, no, up up up, up on top, up where you, where the Arlington is. The his father. I'll tell it. <laughs> his uh, father uh, purchased the corner, and he was the last of several that got purchased and as part of it the way the deed read it was he got all the rest of whatever was left that uh, the Frazier family Dave Drum's ancestors mm -hmm. by this time it was uh, Vi Wayne it was now the owner of it she's and the deeds weren't precise so they just he's the last piece so you get what it, your lot plus whatever I didn't sell well it turns out when the surveyors got it that George Edelman owned not only the corner but a irregular zigzaggy maybe two feet wide five feet but all the way that went all the way across the common parking lot to the where the big uh, mm -hmm. what ben franklin is mm -hmm. anyway he got into an argument with uh, bob elliott over voting where he was allowed to vote and that that spiraled into george saying okay i'm not going to let you you go across <laughs> use this land behind and uh at that time, I was on the village board, and so since I had known your father all my life, and his father was a very, very stern, no-nonsense kind of guy, and I'll tell you, um, you practically saluted every time you saw him, uh, but I was enlisted going on to, to mediate this thing, <laughs> and uh, so I would stop in and see him when I get home from work and, and uh, at the liquor store. At that time, he was running the liquor store. And uh, we'd chat about it and what his grievances were. And ultimately, he uh, agreed with his lawyer, uh, your, your uncle, uh, to uh, sell the village the land. And if they put up that flagpole. So, because your father was also very patriotic. An amazing guy, if you think about it. He's, during World War II, he's, he's a German descent, George Adolf Edelman senior and he names a son born during world war ii george adolf jr but he's a super american patriot but by golly he's also german and so you can just sort of see he's the kind of fellow he was and uh, but anyway he loved that flag and mm -hmm. that flag sort of was enough to sort of uh you know sweeten the deal to make it all because he at the end of the day he was he wasn't he was he always knew he was gonna Settle the matter, but he was just he, aggrieved. He bought, he bought a flag for every one of us, our kids, us, his kids. Oh, yeah. To put up in front of our houses and not just an ordinary flag, a flag, a very good flag. A flagpole and the whole thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's your father. That's, That's your father. right. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, 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 well, I won't tell that story. <laughs> um, the, uh, Gee, I've covered a lot here, Richie. What did we forget? Carnivals. Carnivals was one of the big events of growing up. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what the carnival was like as a child. Well, I lived down there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I always, always loved the carnival and the carnival. Oh yeah, that it, was it. That was a, that was like my vacation. It was, wasn't it? It was just such a joyous time. And Richie was a daredevil kind of a kid, you know. He was the one that was always doing those uh, things. And, and when it came to the rides, he was always willing to ride the most exciting ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and at the carnival, it was the roundup. Mm -hmm. You remember the roundup? Yeah. 
<laughs> he would do, he was the kind of kid that would do the extra stuff, like, you know, climb up higher on the roundup so his feet weren't touching. Or, did you ever do it upside down? I don't know. Yeah, you, I did it. Yeah, did it upside down. That's the sort of stuff he would do. I was, I would get on it with him occasionally, but I was always, uh, you know, my stomach would get really nervous and worried until. You know, I almost kind of didn't like doing it, but I did it anyway for the thrill. <laughs> I got, uh, I I was going on the roundup. I get on the roundup and I go around and the ride was over and I run around and I get on the roundup and go around. <laughs> I get, get around. Finally, I, I, get, I get up the steps and the, and the guy who was running, he just go like this. <laughs> he just go like That's this. enough. And then one day I was, I was going through the bar. And the guy that was running the roundup, this is, this is, not, it wasn't even the, uh, the carnival time. The guy that was running it, he was just in there eating dinner yeah. or lunch. And I don't even think he was with the carnival anymore. And I went up to him and I, he remembered me. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was letting you ride just for free after a while. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it was a, yeah, that was a oh, wonderful thing. It was sort of the, I, you know, in a way, we were, it was the middle of the summer, so you had missed your friends from school enough, and it kind of give you, gave you a, <laughs> a, a reacquaintance beforehand. Yeah. Well, Rich, I think i am uh, talked enough here today. <laughs> you know, it's been great to sit down with you. Yeah, Thank it was you, a good time. Friend. Yeah, yeah. Anything I forgot we should tell about? No. There's so many things. We could talk about the Sally Edelman. Cancer fund that you and your family established. Yeah, that's still going on. That's we, still going. We have, uh, we have. Uh, I guess we can maybe put a plug in. We have uh, a thing going on right now. Okay, well, tell us. About we that. have our cancer. Uh, um, we have a festival, uh, music. music festival mm -hmm. coming up on uh, September seventh. All the money goes to uh, cancer. Where is it? It's going to be at the Fireman's Field. Uh -huh. This will be our third uh, third one. Yeah, what do you call it? Uh, it's got a name. Uh... You, got, you got me now. I can't. I should. It. I got a ticket. I got a ticket from the other day. So, yeah. I, uh, but the Music Fest is, yeah, it's the third year, and we're going to be three or four bands, I think, that are going to yep. be. Yeah, we got uh, Seventh Heaven. We got um, Lion Eyes. They're. Uh, Eagle Tribute Band. We got the Yacht Club, and there's uh, the, the sub, we have a, another girl who's been there every year. She changed the name band, but uh, a young girl, right? A young she, girl. Yes, yeah, I, um, she's quite amazing. I saw her the first year. So anyway, that ma Magic Mystery Tour. Mag Magical Mystery Tour. Yeah, so I believe that's it. Isn't yeah. it awful? I can't even think of the name in my own tour. Well, that's all right. <laughs> You're making it happen. You don't need to remember. Somebody else names it. <laughs> well, but all the money goes to uh, cancer. It's a good time. We have uh, we have beer and uh, seltzer. We have uh, three uh, food trucks, and that it's from one o'clock until seven. Uh, we have raffles, and that uh, I have uh, one raffle that uh, I put together. It's uh, it's over um, four hundred dollars for a raffle. It's a complete fishing outfit. Oh, nice! Rod, reel, tackle, galore, worms, all artificial, <laughs> all artificial worms. More artificial ones. Bait, I mean, okay, all the yeah, it, it. it's unbelievable. Tackle box. Uh, the rod and reel is a three hundred dollar rod and reel, and that it's. Um, Unbelievable. And this is a continuation, really, of the uh, Sally Edelman Harry Gardner Cancer Fund. That All the other things that they do. There, uh, Georgie, his older brother, was married to Sally, his high school sweetheart. She died of cancer at a young age. Yep. And uh, that was Georgie's first wife. And he uh, set up this fund. In yep. her, and it still goes and has raised millions of dollars, as I understand. Yes, uh, well, all over a million dollars. And you're continuing the tradition, so that's a, that's a great, yeah. great thing. 
but they do a, a lot of other things. They golf tournaments and all the different things year round. And, they, and they've uh, done a lot of things with the Galisano and um, yeah, uh, Cancer uh, Center in that. So, well, keep up the good work. Thank yeah, you, my but, friend. But uh, it's a real good time. And it's down at the Hilton Fireman's Field. All righty. We'll do it. We'll see you down there. Okay. Down Thanks. Can I ask you a couple questions? Sure. Go okay. for it. First of all, John, thank you very much. And, yeah. and Rich, it's great with some of the information. I, I love getting about Hilton history. So uh, when you mentioned about borders, how much was it for a room for people to rent? Oh, out? I have no idea. No idea? Yeah. It, it had to be cheap. Mm -hmm. back in those days and that uh well there, there's a picture of me in uh in the arlington mm -hmm. uh, there with me I'm about five years old okay. and that and i'm standing on the on the bar with my father and that and there's a picture up over my my head and the fish fries for 65 cents okay <laughs> you're a lawyer you could probably do pretty good math and yeah good I, I think we're talking you know in the neighborhood of 10 bucks a week 20 bucks a week at the most right. it was the rooms were very simple they were a bed there was a just bed yeah. a dresser yeah right i mean and uh and a transom door mm -hmm. and, and then with with like the liquor sales how much was a bottle of vodka what, like, what did they sell them for at that time oh well we didn't there, there was no uh liquor store at that time okay. back when my parents took over the arlington back in those days they only served beer okay and that so i'm i'm thinking maybe like a nickel for a, a you know a glass of beer mm -hmm. or something like that yeah it wasn't uh, nothing that, well uh, but wait a minute you, it wasn't a you say it wasn't a liquor store but your father used to sell in a paper bag i remember people come in and buy bottles yes that 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 was later on back in the Back in the fifties, but back, back when the, the Arlington, when it was back before that, it oh. was a package goods store. When when we uh, first got it, we were the only package goods store in um, New York State for many many years, and then we finally became a liquor store. Huh. Interesting. And, hmm. And then you guys were like, you worked in that room. What was it? The shoot room? The shoot? The beer shoot yeah. down the basement. Were you, yeah. were you paid for that? Or was it just like you did it out, you know, I could tell about that. I, I <laughs> never got an allowance. allowance and it was a, the worst thing I ever asked for. Mm -hmm. So when I got, when I got him, when I got I, it, I said, dude, dad, can I get an allowance? Because before that, I guess I walk over my dad. Can I ask somebody to go do this and that? And yeah, they say, okay, right. fine, fine. Right. Then when I asked for allowance, he gave me five dollars a week, and he says, "Here's an allowance." But he says, "You put two dollars. You go up to the bank, State Bank of Hilton, and you open up my account. You put three dollars in a week, and you keep two dollars, and that's and you use that two dollars for nails for for a week." In there. So that's how I started saving money. And, <laughs> but no more walk up, Dad, can I have some more money? Right. You, you use your two dollars. Learn how to budget that way. That's right. <laughs> and then you were talking about uh, softball with the Arlington. I, I remember playing at Forks Park against some really good Arlington teams. Yes. Much, much after this. Where was the home field? Was that also at the Fireman's Field for where those guys played? Oh, well, we yeah, well we played at the Fireman's Field. Yeah, that's where we started. And then... Uh, Oh God! Played at the schools yeah. and stuff. The regular. Yeah, we played at the schools, and that, that's how we got started. It was there, mm -hmm. but then um, the milkman. I can't think of his Earl, name. Earl, 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 Doug Earl, no, no, not Earl. Brooke. Um, Paul Rude. No, he, he was a, a farmer on uh, Curtis Road. There, um, he was the one that started Forks Park. Charlie Nesbitt. No, no, Charlie Nesbitt bought that years after that. Okay. Uh, Doug, um, Doug Hurlbert. No, not Doug Hurlbert. It's okay. Keep going with the story. But he, he's the one that started it. Okay. He went and uh, started the whole thing, uh, building it, uh, the Forks Park in mm -hmm. the back. 
Yeah. But what the time we're talking is way before Forks Park yeah. even existed. Yeah. 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 This is your era. And, and so like it you was said, uh, the Hilton uh Hilton Recreation that started. Okay. And that and then uh Doug he started it uh got the idea of because we had problems with the fields, the soccer games were taking it taking it over from mm -hmm. us. Okay. And that. And I, I mentioned, I recognize some of those names. Chuck Manson is going to be our next podcast guest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Maurice Weigel, he ended up being a science teacher, I believe. Remember yes, him? yes, and a coach, uh, basketball coach. In the Wheelahan family, of course, I know uh, Mike quite well and Kevin and then the Ikes name. Now, you were saying Chuck Manson was a pretty good power hitter. Did he <laughs> hit the yes. ball? Did they have home run fences at that time, or did he have to light them out? At Bayview and places like that. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. In places like Bayview, mm -hmm. they had fences. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's why he didn't like him out. He just smashed him over and walked <laughs> around. <laughs> um, interesting. You you talked about um, what did you do for a living? What was your job? My job. Yeah. In what? Did, like, did you go to high, college or anything like that? Or no, did never you just went work to in the family business and stuff. I, so I did the family business. Okay. Uh, got drafted. When I got drafted, I. I uh, helped my dad with the liquor store, and then he finally turned the store over to me. So you say drafted? The, excuse me. The, uh, the army. Okay. That's the only lottery I've ever won. <laughs> and yeah, how no. many years did you serve in that? Uh, I just uh, it was um, two years. Okay. Well, thank you for your service. In, in Vietnam. Okay, Vietnam. 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 Um, I didn't know that story about the flagpole. I love that flagpole. Do you? Yeah. Apparently, we have your father to, <laughs> thank, to for thank for it. it. It's yes, really it a gorgeous is. center of town. What did your wife do? Was she a homemaker, or did she have a job? She uh, had a job at uh, Kodak. Okay. In that, and then she, uh, when she got married or got pregnant, then she uh, quit that. And uh, then she went back to work uh, at um, WXXI. Okay. What did she do there? That's a radio She was station? in uh, Human Resources. Okay. And then she loved that job, too. You had two kids, correct? Yep. Okay. And Chrissy was your daughter, of course. Yep. She's oldest? Yep. She's a doctor of pharmacy, you said? Doctor of pharmacy. Okay. So does she dispense medication? Like, what's that job consist of? Oh, she's, well, she's yes, really up into the, it's, she's in a lot of clerical work now. Mm -hmm. And that uh, her and her husband both okay. very cler clerical work. There, she does a lot of uh, trips now. Okay, and, uh, in the same way with her husband. And, uh, very, uh, yeah, way up there. They're into sort of. Her husband particularly is into uh, what's his first name? What's his name? Her, her husband. So Matt. Matt. Yeah. Matt. He, yeah. He works for. Uh, URMC, but he's sort of into the, the strategizing about how they're going to handle drug costs. And, okay. You know, so he's got a, a, a job that's, he, he used to hand out the pills. Right. Gradually, he and Chrissy both, I think. Mm. Did they work for Wegmans at one time or not? No. No, not Wegmans. No. And you got, what, his, her children, you said? Yeah, she got three sons. Yeah, tell, tell me about them, the the grandchildren. Oh, they're in the... How they, old they are and... and oh, uh, let's see. I'm, I'm pressing your memory. I apologize. Nine, nine uh, <laughs> Nine, eleven, and twelve. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think that's, that's it. Nine, eleven, and twelve. And are they local or are they? They live in Victor. Okay, very good. And they're and in get... sports, all kinds of sports. Uh, uh, one's a, um, oh, my granddaughter, she's in the gymnastics, uh, soccer, uh, cheerleading, mm -hmm. ballet, or not, not ballet, uh, tumbling. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you, uh, the, the skiing, they're all, they all ski. They, it's unbelievable. It's hard to keep up with them. The <laughs> oldest, he's, he's, uh, he's 13 and he's, he's, uh, uh he's umping, uh, baseball games. Really? Yeah. Uh, Little umping. league or something? Uh, the, the, the kid, 
whatever it is. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't. I, sure. Unbelievable what they're doing. Um, the middle one, he's a swimmer, swimming. And he's doing, uh, I went to his swim meets there. He's got the breaststroke, the, the, all of the, all these, just like by the Olympics in yeah. that. Um, he does plays. Uh, he, baseball, soccer. He's doing football. They're all, they're in the everything. It's just unbelievable. It's, 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 they're all, you name it, they're doing it. Soccer, they're busy, 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 busy. This yeah. gives you a lot to do and to watch. On. The, yeah. Oh, they're, they're tremendous. They're tremendous. They, 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 they're, done, they're done. They can't do. They tear me out when I, hear, when I hear what they do. And then you said you had a son who recently got married? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And he's a mailman? Is that Mailman, right? yep. And, yep. And for which town or village? Uh, he, well, he, he works in Gates, I mm-hmm. think. He, he does different routes than that. So okay. He's been all over the city and Okay. Yeah. And just to, you know, no one more follow up. It might be, it might, I might be touching on something a little sensitive, but you said your wife ended up having early onset dementia and, and passing away. Um, what was that like as, as a husband and, and, you know, dealing with your wife when, when she started to show signs and, and taking care of her and what you had to do? Oh, it, it's, it's, it's a devastating uh, disease. It, it, it's awful to watch her go, decline. And go through it, and you can't do nothing about it. You know, it's 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 just awful. It's 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 just it's just awful. It's, um, well, I hope she had great years with you, and prior to that happening, oh, and, it's, 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 she she was wonderful. Yes, yeah, she was so proud of her her grandkids and everything. Yes. Was she able to see any of them come into the world? Or did, uh, she did saw the us? the youngest or the old. I'm sorry, the oldest one that come in. Into the world, but not really uh, um, get the true meaning of it. I guess you could say in that. Well, you have you have a great story, and I always knew the Edelman name from my father, and I always knew Edelman's before it was you know that, and I right. now see the connections. I also um, just want to point out as we end the podcast, passing on that um, Sally Edelman and and is it Harry Gardner in the yeah. in the music fest to bring my mem- memory and money to that cause. I just think that's so worthwhile. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll, we'll plug it on future podcasts before the event. Sure. That'd be great. Um, but yeah, it, it's been great having you. Um, I'm going to title this one Exchange and Information with Edelman. And this has been the Foster Focus. We've enjoyed having you. And please tune Thank in you. for future podcasts. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah. The Big H Podcast, tune in now. Conversations that oh wow. Laugh and learn, stay a while. Let's explore that Hilton style. From the highs to the lows, every story just explodes. Mike's got questions on the go, diving deep from head to toe. Every week the guests align, sharing moments so divine. Stay with us, the pace is fine. Every episode you'll find.